All right, I think we're live. Megan, should we give everyone five minutes maybe to join? Yeah, I think that feels good. Um, okay. Give people a few minutes to trickle in. Okay, there's quite a few folks in here already, so we appreciate your patience. We're just gonna give everyone maybe five more minutes to jump into the webinar before we get started. How you feeling, Jason? It looks like we're. Um... I think we're ready to roll. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, if anyone was sitting there wondering why we were silent, sorry, we were just waiting for more people to join. We get the full group here. Um, so, for everyone that joined, thanks for jumping on with Megan and I today. Um, we'll get into some intros and what we're going to be talking about today. But as you can see, and what you uh, obviously have registered for, we're going to talk mainly on the theme of. How to weather the holiday season, right? When obviously it's a it's a unique time during the year in terms of of lead flow and homeowner communication, and if people are ready to have a discussion around uh, an installation or a remodel during the holidays. So we're going to go into some details on how we can help solve those problems uh, when you're combining uh, both hatch and uh, modernize. So diving right in here, quick introductions to myself, uh, Jason Dolan, of course, from Hatch. I'm the Director of Growth and Acquisition. Megan, you want to give a quick intro? I sure do, Jason. Thank you. Um, by the way, I think before I introduce myself, I'm just really excited to be here. Um, like you mentioned, I know there's a lot of uh, challenges during this time of year in the home improvement world, right? So just excited to be here to um, give our partners uh, some some guidance really on how to uh, succeed as much as possible during these uh, trying times, if you will. Um, but for a quick intro, um, hey everyone, my name is Megan Wolf. Um, I'm the head of client strategy and development here at Modernize. 
Um, and in short, what that means, it's really my job to support our team in building uh, successful partnerships with the world's uh, best uh, home improvement companies, really. Um, and I think what that comes down to, a lot of my jo job ends up being how to help companies get the most out of their leads, um, definitely with more of like a digital focus and expertise, but really, you know, anything that helps one of our partners uh, get the most out of their modernized leads really helps them uh, get the most out of the leads that they nurture and work in general. Um, so again, thanks, Jason. Super excited to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for joining, Megan. Um, now, moving forward, just a quick agenda for everyone. I'm not going to go deep in the weeds here. But first and foremost, you have the opportunity to post questions throughout the presentation. We're not going to hold questions till the end. We want to keep this as, as interactive and engaging as possible. So please drop any questions you have in the Q&A or the chat section. We'll answer them as, as we'll answer as many as we can throughout the throughout the, the webinar today. Um, but briefly, we'll go through, you know, who's Modernize, who is Hatch, the problems that we're, we're solving for, uh, and we'll go into some, some recommendations on different strategies that you can utilize when it comes to combining Modernize and Hatch, Speed to Lead, Nurture being the main ones that we'll discuss today, and then we'll give a little bit more detail on how these two things really fit together uh, or integrate. And of course, we'll, we'll run a quick Q&A also, I know we have an hour blocked for today's uh, webinar, but we're going to keep this to 30 minutes, guys. Um, I know everyone's busy, so don't feel like, you know, we're going to we're going to hold out on the on the, uh, the real exciting stuff until minute 58. So we'll keep you for 30 minutes and then let everyone get back to their day uh, after we've answered some questions. So quick poll question first. Uh, I. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'd love to get everyone in attendance's opinion or, or the truth truth of the matter. Uh, the question being, are you getting less leads during the holidays? We'll let that hang for a second, and then we'll take a look at everyone's opinion here. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Looking like we expected so far, Jason. Uh, why don't you hit, hit us with the results? Yes. Let's see here. All right. So we have an 88% yes, I am getting less leads during the holidays versus 11 percent of attendees so it sounds like this is indeed a problem um which to us is not surprising to anyone in the room i'm sure that's not surprising so no not at well, all and if i could add to that really briefly jason um we see this trend nationally in, in the home improvement world you know here at modernize we're producing hundreds of thousands of inquiries for home leads meaning increase for home services projects every month right Mm -hmm. um, and typically we see about a, uh, you know, 15 to 20% drop in uh, demand from homeowners from October to November. And that demand uh, kind of goes even lower, essentially, during the typical holiday weeks, like the week of Thanksgiving, um, as an example. And then from November to December, um, we typically see about a tw another 20% to 30% drop in demand from homeowners. And again, uh, that typically drops more dramatically when we get into like the week of Christmas and New Year's as an example. So mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. super surprising. <laughs> not surprising. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we're going to illustrate today, there are there are ways to to solve uh, this this challenge during this this, you know, area of the year, of course. Um, so why don't we why don't we jump into a few additional components here? Actually, first. Megan, uh, yep. quick overview here for you. Oh, of course. Um, I'm excited. And I know I won't linger here too long, guys, uh, but do want to take some time to give you guys a little bit information about Modernize and who we are. Um, and so the best way I would describe this is that Modernize is one of the top uh, lead generation and performance marketing companies um, in the home improvement space. Um, and really what we specialize in is finding homeowners who are interested in home improvement projects um, and sort of acquiring those homeowners as leads uh, through different digital paths. 
Um, we also put a lot of focus on giving homeowners information about their projects uh, to hopefully get them as informed and ready for their appointments when they're you know, getting ready to speak with home services professionals. Um, and then on top of that, if I could direct you guys to that third bullet here, I think what really sets us apart in this uh, in this space is that we put a whole lot of focus in helping our contractors succeed. Um, we have a rock star account management team. Um, we have partnerships, of course, with great companies like Hatch. Um, we're just really dedicated to helping not only homeowners uh, kind of in play matchmaker and help them find home service professionals, uh, but also helping our contractors get the most out of their uh, digital leads and lead nurturing strategies overall. Thanks, Megan. Real quick, before we jump to a little more info on Hatch, we got a question here. I think it's a great one mm -hmm. uh, from Victoria. Thanks, Victoria. Um, actually, more of a comment than a question saying there's not just less leads they're giving us, uh, but folks are looking online, but they're not ready yet uh, for conversation, if I'm understanding this correctly, Victoria. But um, Megan, you want to speak to that briefly? And then I think we're going to get into that. Yeah, we detail. are. And I'd love to speak towards it uh, to kind of kick things off. I think this is one of the top things that uh, concerns or maybe uh, frustrates uh, home improvement professionals during this time of year. Um, you do find a lot of folks who are expressing that interest or maybe acquiring about projects, and then they're kind of kicking the can, if you will, on moving forward or wanting to set that initial appointment. Um, and if you guys think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Like if you're a homeowner during this time of year, you might be having family over for the holidays. You might just be, you know, wrapped up maybe in holiday and Christmas spending as well. Um, so I think there's both a, a financial planning aspect of it that comes into play, right? Um, and then I think there's also a time management piece of it that comes into play. Um, and we will talk through some strategies for how to work around this. Um, I think a lot of it kind of comes back to uh, some of the basics with an extra twist in terms of how to overcome those, some of those objections and to push urgency. Uh, but if I were to give kind of a couple nuggets before we get into the rest of the content for today, um, it's a great time of year to like leverage discounts as an incentive, right? Like if you guys have the uh, flexibility to offer some of those options, uh, and, you know, a lot of companies who are looking to hit like an end of year number or something like that during this time of year uh, will kind of leverage their most exciting um, discounts and incentives basically uh, to sort of incentivize homeowners that now is the best time to move forward with the project or get a quote. Um, so that's a huge piece of the puzzle. Um, and then what we also want to help you guys do is understand how uh, to not give up basically. Um, those folks, you know, even if they, uh, you know, you pull out all your best stops to push urgency and get that appointment scheduled during this time of year, um, what what can home improvement professionals do uh, to make sure that you don't give up on those leads and nurture them? Um, we find that a lot of our like December, November appointments or leads rather end up becoming um, appointments and, and revenue that you can realize in like January, as an example. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, totally understand the problem and hopeful that, you know, some of the content we'll run through today will help you feel more confident. Um, awesome. Thanks, Megan. Victoria, thanks. Great question. Um, real briefly, I'll keep this snappy. Uh, in terms of who Hatch is, so Hatch is the messaging app for home improvement and home services. What what does that mean exactly? So let me break it out into three, three bottlenecks that Hatch is solving for. First and foremost, um, what I would call the first, the, you know, the first entry point, uh, when you're communicating with a homeowner, right? The lead, when the lead comes in, the challenges there are, are somewhat obvious. Um, what is the initial lead engagement process? How quickly is it? How are you communicating with that homeowner? Is there a process in place? Is there some type of automation? Are we hitting all of our leads? It's, it's really dependent on business to business. Uh, what we're solving for at Hatch is that exact process. So as soon as the, what I'm calling the sales process begins, Hatch steps into the equation to automate that communication. So one, no leads go, you know, missing. They don't fall through the cracks, but also beyond the speed and making sure every homeowner is actually contacted. That's obviously very important and making sure that's being done is, is super important, but it's the how. Um, in terms of how you're actually communicating with your potential customers, meaning are you engaging them in a way that they're going to respond to? So traditionally, phone calls, emails, all still very effective. But part of this is actually creating a cadence of communication that one is automated, but also creates that 
sort of nurture type of structure where they're getting multiple messages in different manners, text, email, calls, all those different things. So it's that omni-channel approach, but it's also the automation where, yes, we're touching them immediately with a, a touch point of some kind, whether it's a text or an email, but if they don't respond, that continues. And oftentimes it takes a number of touches for that homeowner to actually engage with you. So that's the first piece of what we're solving for. Middle of the road, the second bucket is that age old rehash, nurture, sales follow up problem that that businesses have. Uh, we'll get deeper in the details in here and you know later in the presentation and show you guys some recommendations. But really what that means is we're able to find a lot of leads. We often use the term mining for gold in your existing database or your CRM, whatever it may be where we can power that communication to homeowners that whether it was someone during this holiday season that didn't, you know, they got a quote and they didn't move forward because it's the holidays or it's someone from three months ago that canceled their appointment or canceled their demo, demo, no sale, whatever it is. So we find those people and we automate that communication and bring them back into the business. And oftentimes there's a ton of revenue just sitting in your databases that are you know, just not being communicated with, right? It's, it's the next and the best, right? It's the new lead is better than the old lead. When in reality, there's a lot of opportunity that's, that's existing in the database today. And this is particularly relevant. And again, we'll get more into this during the holiday season where when that lead flow drops, you can take advantage of the folks that you have in your existing database and find a lot of people in there who will be ready to move forward with the project you know after the holiday you can start that conversation now the last piece that hatch is solving for and we're, we're not going to get too deep into that today is more of what i would define as your your post sale pre-installation pre-construction pre-remodel communication making sure the homeowner is having a, a good experience after they've signed on the dotted line and, and said yes i'd like to move forward with this project Jason, I have one quick comment on the last thing you just said. And again, sure. I know this isn't a huge focus for today's meeting, but I know a lot of home improvement pros out there for this holiday season in particular, maybe, and the manufacturing delays and supply chain issues that are kind of pervasive throughout the world right now. And I think in particular in the home improvement world, um, we find that having a good communication strategy around that helps make sure that you hold on to some of those, as many of those sales as possible, right? Um, so I just wanted to reemphasize that. It's really great that you all have solutions for that. And I think that um, a strategy on communication around that is super important all the time. But I think especially during the holiday season and especially during times when, you know, lead to install dates are like six, eight, 10, 12 weeks out. Right. Um, so it's a super good point to hit on. 100%. Yeah. And thanks for for dialing, dialing in on that. Yeah. I mean, when the communication doesn't, I'm not saying when communication breaks down, but perhaps when that communication is longer tail, a perfect example, like you're saying, Megan, like the conversation has started, but the homeowner is not prepared, or we're talking about an installation that is delayed due to uh, supply chain issues or whatever it may be with everyone being very busy and a lot of jobs booked out, maintaining that communication during that quote unquote dark period between mm -hmm. installation and, and deal being actually signed obviously, you know, you see uh, three three main areas, right? A happy homeowner, which is going to generate um, secondary business if it is, if it's a partial of some kind. Uh, also, referrals, of course, and, and reviews. Totally. Yeah. Give me one. Victoria Second. has another question. Um, this looks like it's hatch related. So, Question is, if we start with Hatch and have a number of leads sitting in different lead statuses, how do you grab those? And when do you start sending emails and text back to them? Great question. So that sounds like it's a nurture sales follow-up rehash type of scenario, Victoria. Uh, basically, how we do that is we Hatch integrates with uh, the majority of the CRM systems that are existing in this space, whether it be your... And everyone knows the roster, your market charts, your improvement 360s, your job nemesis, et cetera, et cetera. We can integrate and find the lead disposition um, based on your question. So if it's a lead in demo, no sale, quote, no sale, canceled appointment, whatever it may be, 
Hatch basically finds those. We pull all of those leads or contacts into our system and start to engage them dependent upon the type of communication you're looking for. So if it's a, you know, a very old lead, old and cold, let's call it, there's a different type of communication we would recommend in terms of the actual content and the way that it's structured, meaning when do you send the text? When do you send the email? If it's a newer lead that, you know, canceled a, or didn't move forward with a quote based on the holiday season, perhaps again, different type of messaging, but the, system itself integrates and automates that communication uh out very quickly hopefully that answers your questions drop another one in there if i if i didn't nail it okay so we're going to dive into speed to lead first uh we'll get into the nurture component of this discussion later in the presentation um but i think megan you're gonna you're going to start this off, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I, I will save you guys uh, the boredom of reading all these stats out to you, but I do want you to go ahead and take a look at them. Um, I think what this speaks towards, it's what you were touching on earlier, um, Jason. It's that, you know, while calling is good um, and it's always going to be a part of your um, appointment, you know, setting playbook, if you will, um, more and more so as we see time move on, it's just not not quite enough if you're looking get, to get the most out of the inquiries that are coming in, whether they come from sources like Modernize, um, a lot of the stuff applies to like any lead that will ever uh, touch your business. Um, and so I think the big takeaway here is that, you know, again, ca calling isn't just enough and it's, it's super important to have that omni-channel uh, lead nurturing strategy to really get the most out of the leads that, that are coming your way. Um, and I think to kind of bring this back, um, I don't know, something that always helped me understand this, right, was thinking about myself as a consumer, right? If I get a call in and it's from a number I don't recognize, you know, you know, probably 97% of the time, I'm, I'm not going to pick it up. You know, I'm waiting for either like a voicemail or, you know, a follow up text message, um, I think also does this job really well um, to understand who's calling me. I think mm -hmm. consumers have that natural um, sort of like barrier or like fear or like avoidance of like spam calls or like robo dials or whatever it is, right? Um, and so I think what contractors should take away from this is number one, um, don't get super frustrated. Um, you know, if people aren't picking up the phone off of that first dial, it's kind of natural behavior, if you will. Um, and then I think the second part of it is to make sure you're leveraging um, as many communication uh, styles um, to reach homeowners um, and to make sure, uh, you know, you're letting people know who's calling uh, really. Um, and again, to your point, Jason, a lot, a lot of this stuff is kind of going back to the basics, but the basics of uh, lead nurturing um, kind of help, you know, help get contractors through that like holiday slump, right? Um, mm -hmm. When leads are light, it's the best time to sort of lean into, um, you know, a focus on speed to lead and um, changing up your contact cadence to make sure that you're getting as many appointments out of your leads as possible. 100%, 100%. And just to add one piece of uh, interesting information, around uh, that type of communication, Megan, what we've seen a ton of is to your point, um, and this is oftentimes uh, in more of a sales follow-up or a rehash type of scenario, but if a homeowner is seeing a phone call of a number they don't recognize, or perhaps they do recognize it, but they don't wanna have that tough conversation around saying, I don't wanna move forward with this project, mm -hmm. oftentimes they're gonna ignore it and you're gonna go, go to voicemail or just, have that call turned off, right? The other piece is email oftentimes, um, while still effective, the response rates and the engagement, rate, engagement rates during those scenarios are much lower. What we have found super interesting is even when a homeowner receives a, when a homeowner receives a text of that in that sales follow-up uh, rehash or nurture type of scenario, and I know I'm going off, off speed delete here for one <laughs> moment, but what they're doing oftentimes is they're saying no or maybe, but because you get the no or the maybe, you actually have an opportunity to turn that around and turn that into business versus getting sent to voicemail or sitting in an email box forever. Totally. I think the power of that is like totally understated maybe. So um, mm -hmm. those stories are powerful. Absolutely. Um, so Quick stat call out here. If you respond quickly, 21 times more likely 
to close a deal. Um, this is not earth shattering information. You respond to a lead quickly, you're more likely to set the appointment and actually close the deal. And this is obviously extremely important always, but during this segment of the year, during the holiday season, when the leads are, are lower, it becomes even more important to quickly communicate with homeowners that are actively looking at some type of job, but also it's equally important to respond to them in the right way during this holiday season, because to Victoria's point earlier in the presentation, thank you, Victoria, people may not be actually ready to move forward with an appointment. They may not want, you know, your teams coming into their house during the holidays because it's the holidays and they're not ready to move forward with an appointment. But if you're responding quickly and responding with what you know to be true during this holiday season, I think you're more likely to get a response from the homeowner, but you're setting the right expectation with the homeowner and not pushing for that hard sale where they're saying, I'm not ready for this. But if we start with the right type of engagement, even if the, the job gets pushed out until after January, that's fine, right? You still have the opportunity to move forward with the project when the homeowner is ready as long as we start and set the expectation the right way. Now, quick real world example of uh, a challenge when it came to the speed to lead specific uh, strategy that we're discussing today. So this is coming from Beth Fitter, San Diego. So their problem was inconsistent follow-up and low connect rates, right? So they had a low lead to estimate rate. It was right around 5%. So that was an identified identified problem in the business. Uh, obviously, that's that's not great. Uh, and the solution was not necessarily hatch being the solution, but it's how we're communicating with our leads. So if we start to incorporate what hatch provides, right, that automation and the text first mm -hmm. approach, instant text, email and voicemail to every new lead, what they saw in terms of, of result, they were it was five X more on lead more on paid leads of 70 paid leads. 21% um, were booked of that total lead volume and a 33% close rate. So 34,000 in sales from those from that subset of 70 leads and the increase, you know, from from 5% up to 21%. So not in, you know, not small here, a, a, a major increase once they started to change the behavior in terms of how they're um, communicating with their leads. Now I'm going to speed up here because I said we're going to be 30 and we're already going a little bit long. So <laughs> to give you a real example of speed to leads, uh, speed to lead campaign, you can start using immediately. And what, what, is, what does that actually mean? So part of what Hatch provides, and I'm not going to go into, into the tech weeds here, but I wanted to to give everyone a look at this because sometimes it's a little hard to envision what this actually looks like. So what we do is when we're setting up these speed to lead campaigns with, with our customers, basically what we're doing here is we have thousands of conversations where we know this is effective. This is not meaning how do you set this up? What do you say? And when do you say it? So this is just an example of what you would see inside of a hatch platform in terms of the cadence of communication, as we call it. So what you're seeing there, day one, lead comes in, homeowner would receive a text, an email, and a call. Day two, a text. Day three, a text and an email. And you see we have that circled. Oftentimes, based on our data, I shouldn't say oftentimes, it, it's, it's the most highly engaged uh, segment in the cadence is day three. And why that's important is going back to the earlier conversation it's making sure that you're maintaining communication past that first touch point you send one text you make one phone call you make you send one email you're going to miss out on folks that don't reply until that third touch okay i think megan you're going to jump in here on, on the nurture component right yes i am and i think we already have touched on some of these uh topic stations so i won't uh, repeat myself too much but Again, I think the two major uh, problems that we find during the holiday season, right, and what we focused on so far um, is really, hey, there are less leads coming in, 
what tactics can we implement to make sure we're getting the most out of those fewer leads that are coming in, right? Mm -hmm. um, then I think another piece of this is uh, what other tactics can we leverage knowing that leads aren't coming in, uh, knowing that homeowners may be more hesitant to kind of move forward or sit with an appointment during this time of year. How can we make sure that those leads don't kind of get lost in the shuffle, if you will? Um, how do we make sure that we're following up with those like December like maybes or the, those December waiters and shoppers uh, come like the new year uh, to make sure that uh, we're making sure that those December leads become our January appointments and sales and revenue, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a whole lot in this that is like super important and super helpful to, for contractors to understand. Um, and I think a uh, another nugget I want to add in here as well um, is that contractors should not be super afraid if they're getting leads in and spending money uh, during um, you know November, December, those holiday times, and they're not seeing the ROI as quickly as they might anticipate, right? Um, you know, in my seat and our account manager seats, we're working with contractors every day who get kind of nervous to keep lead flow active during this time of year because of uh, the point Victoria brought up. It's, mm -hmm. hey, we're getting leads and they, they just don't want to sit right now or we can't get appointments, right? What's super helpful to remember is if you have a good lead nurturing strategy and you have a good follow-up strategy, you're not going to lose those people. Um, you know, the intent is still there. These people are still shopping. Uh, so making sure that you keep your funnel open and not to get too scared uh, when your appointment rates going down and your cost of marketing is creeping up a little bit. Uh, Cause we do find that the bake time on those leads is longer. If you stick with it, with it if you nurture those leads, um, you'll be able to, again, take those and have them uh, kind of jumpstart your uh, January, um, if that makes sense. And it looks like I did get a quick question. Um, Yes, we will send, um, Esther asked me if we'll send the presentation afterwards and just wanted to let you all know, um, I think this will be available, right, Jason, for attendees? Absolutely. Yep, we'll send it out to everyone. Awesome. Cool. Anything you want to add here, Jason, about how Hatch helps? Um, not necessarily add, but to, I think maybe re reiterate what you just said, yeah. Megan, because I think it's super important, um, is it's not having the fear around... Um, I like I love the term you use uh, a lead that's taking longer to bake. Right, they're gonna they're gonna stay in the oven a little bit longer I think, <laughs> during this time of a year. So yep. don't hit the hit the eject button immediately if you're not mm -hmm. seeing the typical results on leads during this time of year because it's 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 very common. What it's what the data shows. It takes longer than totally take longer. Boom, and I think this brings us into um, this is one of. The, my favorite uh, case studies or data stories that we've come out with um, within the last year or so. Um, and so again, won't bore you guys with reading out all these bullets, uh, but to give you some background on what the analysis is and what the, this shows um, is I spent some time uh, working with one of our largest and most successful window replacement contractors uh, to really get a feel for um, what lead nurturing and a you know, really buttoned up lead nurturing strategy actually produces as far as revenue results go and appointment results go for their business, right? And so what we did is actually we analyzed um, 7,700 uh, scheduled appointments that occurred over a six month time frame that resulted in $7.3 million in net revenue for this customer. Um, and again, th these were all uh, leads uh, we, we had sent them for Modernize. Um, and essentially what we looked at was what was the time frame between when that lead was submitted and when the lead was converted. And by converted, I mean, that was the date that they had the conversation with the homeowner. Um, they said yes, and the appointment got scheduled, right? Um, and so what we found, and I don't think this is super surprising. Um, again, Jason, you were kind of speaking towards this. You do get the most juice for your, for, from your squeeze in terms of lead nurturing uh, within those first couple days of the lead uh, being submitted, right? So again, that reiterates the story of things like speed to lead and having that initial strong uh, outreach cadence um, when the lead is new is super important to getting the most out of leads like Modernize, but I would also apply that to your leads in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the more interesting part of the story um, is that um, if you look at the 7 um, and 11% cohort, um, almost 20% of the revenue uh, this company realized was from leads that some companies might consider quote unquote aged or maybe even dead, which is one of my least favorite words, by the way, um, in this space, in my opinion, leads never die. Um, and it's always important uh, to keep them at least in some sort of drip campaign or, or follow up cadence. 
uh, because you, you all will be surprised, like no's and dead leads sort of get revived and turn into yeses at a rate that can be pretty surprising. Um, and so again, in this case study, we found that 20% of the appointments that they ended up setting um, and also 20%, you know, roughly of the revenue um, they ended up um, achieving from that cohort of leads uh, was from leads that were aged um, sort of 14 days, 15 days or more, which is super powerful. Um, and then again, to jump off of Jason's point earlier, this is an even more important concept to understand during the holiday season because those leads are sitting in the oven um, a little bit longer and that baking period is exaggerated, right? Um, so basically yeah. the short story here, guys, is that um, there is more revenue hiding out there. Um, if you uh, sort of stop contacting leads after one week, two weeks, after 10 calls or whatever the number is, um, just super important to have that uh, longer term follow up strategy because there's more more gold nuggets basically uh, to go out there er, there and get. Um, so, yeah, this is a fun one. 100 percent. Love that one. Great, great data there. Um... Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be brief on a few of these as we're coming up on time, and I wanna I wanna give people the opportunity to ask some questions uh, if there are any. Um, so real briefly, this is a, a I think a particularly relevant um, real world example due to the fact that this is uh, Pella, Kansas City, um, and their problem was the holiday season, right? So they, need, they needed to generate more leads to fill their pipeline going into the new year. Not a shocker there. Um, but the challenge there, right? The lead flows down. There's less homeowner demand. So how do you generate more leads when that demand is down? You look at what you already have in hand. So you look at the homeowners you have in your system. I think I'm repeating myself, but I'll, <laughs> I'll say it one more time. Finding the people that are in your system and looking at that CRM as a potential gold mine for you for revenue, right? So in this example, they specifically targeted, uh, you know, high, high, high value quotes that didn't move forward. In this case, it was over sixty thousand dollars. Setting up those automated campaigns uh, that we showed you with Speed to Lead, and the results were three hundred k in additional revenue of based on the leads that were already in the building. So that's how they solved it. So it's a combination of the two things uh, that we've discussed today, making sure that. Lead flow keeps going, knowing it's down, communicating with them the right way, but also taking advantage of what's already what's already in house. Here's an example of a nurture campaign for unsold leads. Um, this probably looks familiar based on what I just showed you, speed to lead. But again, this is just a good visual of how we recommend um, the nuance of communicating with a call it a nurture lead or an unsold lead versus a, a new lead coming in into your business. Here's a good look at the actual system itself. This is where um, we call them hatch champions would be inside of our system, actually communicating with homeowners that are engaging. And this actually turns your business into more of an inbound approach. Basically when people are responding to your, to, um, speed to lead or new leads that are coming in, homeowners responding, I mean, uh, or homeowners that are responding to nurture campaigns like we just discussed, you'll receive notifications, uh, your Hatch champions or your Hatch users will jump in here and start to actually have conversations. So integrating with Hatch and Modernize, what does this actually look like? Uh, well, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to go into the code by any by any means, but to give you a visual of the flow. Um, so you start to think about where where does the story begin? And the story begins with the homeowner at the top of that pyramid there. The homeowner is the one requesting a quote or looking for service or looking for a remodel, whatever it may be. Coming through Modernize, that lead is then typically being disseminated into your CRM, and if Hatch is inside of the equation, it's going to your CRM and to Hatch. The lead itself is living inside of the CRM system. That's sort of, we like to call the source of truth uh, for your sales folks for lead dispositions and notes and activities and all that great stuff. It's also hitting us. And when it hits us, that's when this communication methodology that we just talked about begins. Think of us as the communication hamster, hamster wheel, I like to say, spinning over here. And as those messages are happening, you're using Hatch to communicate, source of truth being your CRM, 
And then what we do is we push all that communication over to the CRM. Uh, I believe it's a, a sync a couple times a day to make sure if you are looking at the record in your CRM, everything that's happening in Hatch um, is there. So homeowner to modernize, CRM to Hatch, and then we connect up to the CRM. And I think we can actually give you kind of a cool video here of how this looks. Oh, yeah. Megan, you want to probably speak to this one. Oh, yeah. This is pretty cool. And I think so what you guys are looking at here is someone uh, or what someone would experience uh, going to modernize.com, inquiring about a project. You'll see this person entering details about their project, their name, contact info. Um, and then what's great about working with Modernize is that all of these leads are created and delivered to our partners in real time. Um, so what you'll see happen, lead gets submitted, we're doing the contractor match process. Um, and then what Hatch enables you to do is immediately hit that person with a text message as soon as that lead is submitted. Um, so again, just creates a really uh, seamless uh, flow and a good experience for the customer, right? And then on top of that, as you can see, a lot of modernized homeowners actually come to us through like mobile paths, if that makes sense. So it's like, you know, they're on there, they're submitting their modernized lead, they boom, immediately get a text message and are able to communicate about their project and get introduced to your company right away. Uh, so just a really powerful um, experience uh, to make sure, you know, you're connecting with homeowners and just giving them the best uh, kind of customer experience as possible. Love it. Such a good visual. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so poll question again. Uh, want to learn more about Hatch and Modernize, one or the other, or both? And we'll reach out to everyone that does answer those poll questions individually, whether it be Megan's team or a member of my team. Uh, or perhaps it's a member of both of our teams, if, if you're answering <laughs> that you want to learn about both of these solutions. Um, all righty. So I know I promised 30 minutes. We were close. <laughs> I have 30, 36 yeah. minutes on my timer here. So that's pretty uh, good. That's, that's pretty not good. bad. You know, I think we, <laughs> think we kept it snappy yeah. for everyone that, that was able to attend. We appreciate um, jumping in, but I want to set aside a few minutes here if there are additional questions um, about what we just talked about, about any, you know, whether it be about Modernize, about Hatch, um, or anything else for that. Oh, here we go. Um, cool. So here's, a, yes, there will be a recorded copy. Um, we'll send it out to everyone that attended as well as uh, registered. Looks like we have another one here from Chris McCurry. Chris, question is, when a lead from a homeowner comes into Modernize, do you sell it to multiple contractors? Megan? Yes, great, great question, Chris. Uh, the very simple answer here is yes. Uh, the value proposition that we provide to homeowners um, is sort of a compare quotes sort of value proposition, right? From the research that we found as well, we do poll our homeowners uh, usually once a quarter. Um, and ask them questions about what they, you know, are looking to get out of, um, you know, using a lead service like Modernize as an example. Um, and what we find is that most homeowners are looking for three quotes. And that's kind of our job, right, is to play matchmaker. Um, not only are we servicing the homeowner, um, but we're also, uh, you know, giving contractors the opportunity to co go out there and chase that business. Um, so, yeah, short answer is yes. Uh, the maximum amount of companies that we can match with an, any individual um, homeowner or lead is uh, four maximum. Um, so I hope that helps. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Megan. Um, yeah. No additional questions as of yet. I'll, I'll uh, just, I'm going to give a quick recap um, and we'll see if anyone else has any questions and we'll, we'll wrap it up and let everyone awesome. go on with their day. So just briefly, um, we'll leave you with, you know, in terms of solving for this challenge during the holiday season um, and thinking about lead flow and thinking about homeowner communication. So as we've as we've discussed today, and, and perhaps for anyone that maybe joined the joined the webinar uh, late, well, there will be a there will be a recording sent. But um, realistically, you know, the lead flow is going to be down um, during the holidays, and homeowners are probably going to be behaving a little bit differently. Even the folks that do uh, engage with you, they may not be ready to have 
someone come out to their home to, you know, provide a quote or run the appointment or get started with the actual job itself due to the fact that it's the holidays. It's the way it is. Um, so what we're basically recommending to everyone today is one, making sure that you understand that that lead flow will be down. And when you're starting to uh, think about how you communicate, making sure that you're communicating with all of your leads, but you're also communicating them, communicating with them in the best way, meaning multiple touch using different types of approaches, whether it be text, email calls, voicemails, but not giving up on that lead also. Um, I know I said it previously, but I love the way that you frame it, Megan. These leads need to bake a little bit longer. Yeah. Keep them in the oven. Don't throw them away just because they <laughs> didn't come out as quickly as most leads do. It's just the, the nature of the beast at this time of year. Um, secondly, don't turn off the lead flow. Um, your competitors out there um, are keeping them on. So if you're not the one getting the lead, someone else will be getting that lead. So keep in mind that methodology of communication and understanding that those leads may take a little bit longer, whether it be to set the appointment or to have that conversation or actually move forward with the job. Just expect that going into this time of year. Uh, and then second piece of this is with that lead flow being down during the holiday season, taking advantage of what you already have in the building, taking advantage of all of those leads that you have maybe purchased from modernize from other lead aggregators that you spent money on social media advertising that came through your website, whatever it may be, make sure you take all of those leads that are sitting in the CRM, perhaps collecting dust and breathe some life back into them, recommunicate with them. As you saw in that Pella KC example, they found $300,000 just sitting in a CRM. So don't, don't forget about those folks value there. Um, and let me, Stop talking for a moment. Brad Hughes has a question. I think this is a question for you, Megan. From Brad, does Modernize offer offer a percentage of sold job option for leads? Got it. I, I think I know what you're asking about, Brad. Uh, so all of the um, sort of like payment structures or agreements we set up with our customers on a, are on a pay per lead basis. Um, there's a whole lot of reasons for that. Um, I think. A big piece of it is that we find that uh, our customers perform better um, when uh, the program is set up that way. Um, so that's really the, the biggest reason. Um, and it also helps us more effectively market on our customers' behalf. Um, I'm happy to get into more details with this about you um, 101 if you want to follow up with me afterwards. Um, but I think that answers uh, the question uh, in short. So thanks, Brad. All righty. I think... That's probably going to wrap it up, Megan. No more questions in the chat. Um, we appreciate everyone joining. Victoria, thank you for all your questions. Great stuff. Brad, thank you. Chris, thank you. And Megan, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, sure. I know everyone's busy during the holiday season, as we discussed today. So thanks for jumping on with, with me and, and with Hatch. Um, as you guys can see on your screen still, uh, if you're interested in getting started with Modernize, hit that link right there, getting started with Hatch, hit that link right there, or feel free to reach out to myself or to Megan directly, and uh, we'll get you set with, a, with the right member of our, of our respective teams. So having said that, Megan, thanks again. Thanks Thank everyone you, Jason. for joining. <laughs> thanks, everyone.